Hello, my beloved child. I'm Jesus, your Savior. Here is a message from God to you. Don't close this video without listening because it's for you. In fact, if you love God and His Son, Jesus Christ, watch this video until the end and don't forget to click subscribe, like, and comment on this video. God bless you. I love you, my sons. I love you, my daughters. Now we can hear the message from God. Thank you. I call you to be a worker in my harvest, to go out and share my message of salvation with those who are lost. The fields are ready, and the time is now. Do not wait for the perfect moment or the ideal conditions, step out in faith, and trust that I will equip you. The work you do in my name has eternal significance, and I will be with you every step of the way. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. The way of the world may seem easy and appealing, but it leads to destruction. I call you to choose the narrow path, the path that leads to life. It is a path of sacrifice, faith, and obedience, and though it may not always be easy, it is the way to true fulfillment. The broad road may be popular, but it leads to emptiness. Choose the narrow gate, for it is the way of my kingdom. Keep your eyes on me, and trust that I will guide you through the challenges you face. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. You are the branches, and I am the vine. Your life draws strength, purpose, and fruitfulness from me. When you remain connected to me, you will bear much fruit. Stay rooted in my love, and allow my Father to prune you, shaping you into the person you were created to be. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But with me, you will flourish, and your life will bear witness to the goodness and glory of God. Remain in me, and you will find purpose and fulfillment. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Every act of kindness you show to others, you show to me. When you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and welcome the stranger, you are serving me. Do not overlook the needs of those around you, for in meeting their needs, you participate in my mission of love and compassion. Be generous, be kind, and open your heart to those who are suffering. Each act of love is an opportunity to serve me, and in doing so, you reveal my kingdom to the world. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. In serving others, you serve me. When you care for the poor, the marginalized, the outcasts, and those in need, you are expressing your love for me. Every act of kindness, no matter how small, is a reflection of my heart. I see every time you reach out to the least of these, and I honor that. When you lift up those who are forgotten by the world, you bring glory to my name. Let your life be marked by compassion, for in loving others, you demonstrate your love for me. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. I hold the keys to eternal life. Death does not have the final word, for in me, there is life that never ends. When you believe in me, you are given the gift of eternal life, a life that transcends the grave and is filled with my love, joy, and peace. Do not fear death, for I have overcome it. I am the resurrection, and through me, you are made alive. Trust in my promise, and know that death has no hold over you. In me, you are promised a hope that will never fade. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the Shepherd who cares deeply for each of my sheep. You are precious to me, and I know you by name. I lead you to green pastures, beside still waters, and I protect you from harm. I lay down my life for you, because you are worth it to me. When you face trials, know that I am with you, guiding and protecting you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Rest in the assurance that I am always watching over you, 
and I will lead you to safety. Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Do not overlook the children, for they are precious in my sight. Their hearts are open to receive my love, and their trust is a beautiful example for all of you. Be like them, humble, trusting, and full of wonder at the goodness of God. The kingdom of God belongs to those who approach it with childlike faith, and I invite all to come to me with the simplicity and sincerity of a child. Let the children come, for they are the ones who will lead you into my kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Humility is the key to entering my kingdom. When you recognize your need for me, when you come before me with a heart that is broken and contrite, you are blessed. The poor in spirit are those who are not self-sufficient but rely on my grace and mercy. They know that they need me, and because of their humility, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Do not pride yourself on your strength or achievements, but come to me in humility, and you will find that I exalt the humble and give them all that they need. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In times of sorrow, know that I am with you. When you mourn, I will comfort you. Your grief is not unnoticed, and my heart aches with yours. There is a time for mourning, but there is also a time for comfort. I will be your refuge in times of trouble, and I will heal your broken heart. Though you may weep for a moment, joy will come in the morning. Trust that I will bring you through your sorrow and into a place of peace, where your heart will be restored. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness is not weakness, it is strength under control. The meek are those who do not seek power or fame but serve others with humility and love. I promise that the meek will inherit the earth, for they reflect the heart of my kingdom. Do not seek the praise of men, but seek to serve others in my name. When you are meek, you are aligning yourself with my will, and I will honor you. The humble will find favor in my eyes, and their reward will be great in my kingdom. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Do you long for righteousness? Do you thirst for justice, truth, and purity? If so, you are blessed, for I will fill you. When you seek my righteousness above all else, you will be satisfied. The world cannot quench the thirst of your soul, but I can. I will fill you with my peace, my love, and my truth, and you will experience the fullness of life. Keep seeking righteousness, for it is the only thing that can satisfy the deep longing in your heart. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy is the heart of my kingdom. When you show mercy to others, you reflect the mercy I have shown you. In a world that is quick to judge and condemn, I call you to extend grace and forgiveness. When you show compassion, you are participating in my mission of reconciliation and healing. And know this, as you show mercy, you will also receive mercy. When you forgive others, you open the door for my forgiveness to flow into your life. Be merciful, for in doing so, you reflect my love. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of heart is a treasure in my eyes. It is not about external appearances, but about the condition of your heart. When your heart is pure, when your motives are clean, you will see God. I promise that those who seek me with a pure heart will experience my presence in powerful ways. Keep your heart free from sin and impurity, and allow my spirit to transform you from the inside out. The pure in heart will have the joy of seeing God in all His glory, and they will be filled with His love. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peace is a powerful witness of my kingdom. I call you to be peacemakers, to seek reconciliation and harmony in all your relationships. When you bring peace to a broken world, you are reflecting my nature. I am the Prince of Peace, and as you walk in my ways, you become a child of God. 
You carry my peace wherever you go, and in doing so, you bring healing to those around you. Let your life be marked by peace, for in doing so, you reflect the heart of the Father. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution is a reality for those who follow me. The world may not understand your commitment to righteousness, and it may mock or oppose you. But take heart, for when you are persecuted for my sake, you are sharing in the suffering of Christ. And the reward for your faithfulness is great. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who endure trials and remain faithful to me. Do not fear persecution, for I am with you. Stand firm, for I will honor your faithfulness. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Salt is essential to preserving and flavoring the world, and so are you. I have called you to be the salt of the earth, to bring flavor, preservation, and goodness wherever you go. Do not lose your distinctiveness by blending into the world, but remain faithful to the truth and the love I have given you. When you are true to your calling, you influence the world for good. But if you lose your saltiness, you become useless. Stay true to the purpose I have given you, and let your life bring light and flavor to the world. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Just as I am the light of the world, so are you. I have called you to shine brightly in the darkness, to reflect my love, truth, and goodness in a world that needs it. Your life is a testimony of my grace, and you are called to be a light to others. Let your light shine, so that others may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not hide your light, but let it shine boldly for all to see. In doing so, you bring the light of my kingdom to a world in darkness. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. I came to fulfill the law, to bring it to its full meaning and purpose. The law was never meant to save, but to point you to your need for me. I have come to fulfill every prophecy, every promise, and every law, so that you might find salvation in me. Do not dismiss the law or the prophets, for they speak of the truth that is revealed in me. In me, you find the fullness of God's plan for your life. Follow my teachings, for they are the way to life, truth, and fulfillment. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is the heart of my kingdom, love that transcends all boundaries, even the love of those who oppose you. It is easy to love those who love you, but I call you to love those who hurt you, to pray for those who persecute you. This is the radical love that transforms the world. When you love your enemies, you break the cycle of hate and reflect the love of God. In doing so, you become a witness of my grace, for I loved you even when you were my enemy. Let your love be a testimony of the power of forgiveness and reconciliation. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. True righteousness is not about outward appearances or seeking the praise of others. It is about the condition of your heart and your desire to please me. When you give, pray, and fast, do so in secret, knowing that your Father sees what is done in secret and will reward you. Do not seek the applause of men, but seek to honor me with your actions, knowing that your reward is with me. True righteousness comes from a pure heart that desires to glorify God, not to be seen by others. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. The things of this world are temporary. They can be lost or destroyed, and they will not satisfy your soul. I call you to invest in eternal treasures, those things that cannot be taken away or destroyed. 
serve others, love sacrificially, and live for my kingdom. When you do this, you are storing up treasures in heaven, where they will last forever. Do not be consumed by the pursuit of wealth, status, or material possessions. Instead, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your heart is always drawn to what you value most. If you treasure material things, your heart will be set on earthly pursuits. But if you treasure my kingdom and my righteousness, your heart will be aligned with my will. Examine where your treasure lies, for it reveals what is most important to you. Let your heart be set on the things that last, love, justice, mercy, and truth. When your heart is focused on me, your life will reflect my kingdom, and you will find true fulfillment. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, or any other competing desire. You must choose whom you will serve. If you are devoted to the things of this world, you will be divided and distracted. But if you give your whole heart to me, you will find peace and purpose. Do not let anything take the place of God in your life. Serve me with your whole heart, and you will discover the joy and fulfillment that comes from living in alignment with my will. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Do not let worry consume you. Your Father in heaven knows your needs, and he cares for you. Life is more than the things you possess or the circumstances you face. I have come to give you life in abundance, and I promise to provide for you. Trust in me, and do not be anxious about tomorrow. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Let go of your worries, and know that I am your provider, your shepherd, and your peace. Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? If I care for the birds of the air, how much more will I care for you? You are far more valuable to me than any creature on earth. Trust that I will provide for all your needs, just as I provide for the birds. Do not be anxious, for I am always watching over you. My love for you is constant, and my provision is sure. Take comfort in the fact that I hold all things in my hands, and I will never leave you without what you need. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Worrying will not change anything. It will not add to your life, and it will only rob you of peace. Instead of worrying, trust in me. I hold the future in my hands, and I know what you need even before you ask. Let go of your worries and place them in my care. When you surrender your anxieties to me, you will experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Trust in my timing, my plan, and my love, for I will never fail you. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Make seeking my kingdom your top priority. When you put me first in all things, everything else will fall into place. I know what you need, and I will provide for you as you seek to live in my will. Do not be distracted by the cares of this world or the pursuit of things that are temporary. Instead, focus on my kingdom, and trust that I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Do not judge others, for in doing so, you invite judgment upon yourself. You do not know the full story of another's heart, and only I can see the depths of their soul. Instead of judging, show mercy and grace, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Be humble, recognizing your own need for forgiveness and grace. As you extend love and understanding to others, you will receive the same in return. Let your heart be one of compassion, not judgment. 
Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? It is easy to point out the faults of others, but it is far more important to examine your own heart. Before you criticize, first look within. Deal with your own sin and shortcomings, and then you will be able to help your brother or sister in a spirit of humility and love. Do not be quick to judge others, for you are all in need of my mercy and grace. When you remove the plank from your own eye, you will be able to see clearly to help others. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. I am always available to hear your prayers. When you ask with a sincere heart, you will receive, when you seek, you will find, and when you knock, the door will be opened to you. I am a good father who delights in giving good gifts to his children. Do not be afraid to come to me with your needs, your desires, and your questions. I am always near, and I am always ready to answer. Keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking, for I will not leave you unanswered. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. This is the golden rule, the way to live in harmony with others. Treat others with the same kindness, respect, and love that you desire for yourself. When you act with empathy and compassion, you reflect my heart. This simple rule holds the power to transform relationships and communities. Love one another as I have loved you, and you will fulfill the law of my kingdom. Let your actions be a reflection of my love and grace, and you will bring my light to the world. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. The path of righteousness is narrow and difficult but it leads to life. Many will choose the wide road that leads to destruction, but I call you to walk the narrow path. The world may offer many distractions and temptations, but those who follow me will find life. It may be challenging, but I am with you every step of the way. Keep your eyes fixed on me, and I will guide you through every trial. The narrow road may be difficult, but it leads to eternal life. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Be discerning and wise, for not everyone who claims to speak in my name is true. False prophets will deceive and lead you astray. Do not be fooled by outward appearances, but test everything by my word. Seek the truth, and hold fast to what is good. Be vigilant and protect your heart from deception. Follow me alone, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. By their fruit you will recognize them. The true nature of a person is revealed by their actions. A good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. Look at the lives of those who claim to follow me, and you will see the evidence of their faith. A life rooted in me will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Examine the fruit of your own life, and make sure it reflects my character. Live in such a way that others can see my love in you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It is not enough to speak my name, True disciples are those who live according to my will. Many may profess to know me, but it is through obedience that the relationship with me is made manifest. The path of faith is not just a matter of words, but of actions. Let your life bear witness to the truth of the gospel, not through mere confession, but through the transformation that comes from doing the will of my Father. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer, and you will enter my kingdom. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Your foundation in life must be built on my words and my truth. When you put my teachings into practice, you are like a wise builder who builds on a firm foundation. Life will bring storms, trials, and difficulties, but those who build on my word will stand firm, 
for it will sustain them through every challenge. When you live by my commands, you build a life that will endure. Trust in my word, for it is the rock upon which your life can be securely founded. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. If you hear my words but do not act on them, you are like a fool who builds his house on shifting sand. When trials come, your life will crumble because it lacks a solid foundation. It is not enough to hear my message, it must be lived out in obedience. Be doers of the word, and your life will be built on a foundation that cannot be shaken. Do not let your faith be only in words but also in deeds, and you will stand firm no matter what comes your way. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, and lay down your heavy burdens. When you feel weighed down by the demands of life, know that I am here to provide rest for your soul. I am gentle and humble in heart, and in me, you will find true peace. Do not carry the weight of the world alone. Come, and I will refresh you. Trust in me, and you will find rest that the world cannot offer, a rest that restores and strengthens you for the journey ahead. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you walk with me, you are not carrying the weight of life alone. I am beside you, teaching you, guiding you, and giving you the strength to keep moving forward. My way is not heavy, and my heart is humble. Let go of the false burdens that the world places on you and embrace the peace that comes from following me. You will find rest for your soul, for I am with you always, offering you the grace you need to live in freedom. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Do not repay evil for evil but love even those who do not love you. Love is the greatest weapon against hatred, and by loving your enemies, you reflect the heart of God. When you pray for those who persecute you, you break the cycle of anger and bitterness. You become an instrument of my peace and grace. This is the kind of love that changes the world, the love that extends mercy and forgiveness even in the face of hostility. Let your love shine, and you will be a witness to my transformative power. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Loving those who love you is easy, it is loving your enemies that reflects true Christ-like love. I call you to love those who cannot repay you, those who may never show kindness in return. This is the love that I have shown to you, unconditional, selfless, and sacrificial. When you love those who do not love you, you mirror the heart of the Father, who loves all people, regardless of their response. Let your love be radical, and you will show the world the depth of my grace. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Strive for holiness in all that you do, not out of a desire to earn my love, but because I have already loved you perfectly. In my strength, pursue perfection, seeking to reflect my character in your words, actions, and attitudes. Perfection is not about being flawless, it is about being faithful and continually growing in grace. Let your life be a testimony of the transformation that comes from following me. As you walk in my ways, you will grow more and more into the image of your Heavenly Father. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Do not fear, for I have called you into my kingdom, and I have given you everything you need to live in it. Trust in my provision, for your father delights in blessing his children. You are part of my family, and my kingdom is yours. Do not be afraid of what the world may bring, for you are safe in my hands. Know that I am with you, guiding you, and equipping you for the journey ahead. Trust in my love, and you will find peace in the midst of uncertainty. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your heart is always drawn to what you value most. 
If you treasure earthly things, your heart will be focused on temporary pursuits. But if you treasure the things of my kingdom, love, justice, mercy, and truth, your heart will be aligned with mine. Let your heart be set on the things that are eternal, and your life will reflect my glory. When you invest in my kingdom, your heart will be full of joy, peace, and purpose. Seek first the things that matter to me, and you will find everything you need. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are a reflection of my light in the world, and your life is meant to point others to me. Do not hide the light that I have placed within you. Let it shine brightly in the darkness, bringing hope, healing, and truth to those around you. Be a beacon of my love and grace, and you will draw others to the light of my kingdom. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In times of uncertainty and trouble, do not let fear take root in your heart. Trust in God, and trust in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Believe in my promises, for I will never leave you or forsake you. Let go of worry, and place your trust in me. I am the one who holds the future, and I will guide you through every storm. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the Shepherd who knows each of my sheep by name, and I care for you deeply. I laid down my life for you, so that you may have life in abundance. Do not fear, for I am with you, guiding you, protecting you, and providing for you. When you wander, I will search for you. When you are weak, I will carry you. Trust in my care, and know that I am the Good Shepherd who will never let you go. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Life will bring challenges and difficulties, but do not be discouraged. I have already overcome the world. I have won the victory over sin and death, and I am with you in every trial. Take heart, for you are not alone. I will give you the strength to endure, the peace to carry on, and the hope to keep moving forward. Trust in my victory, and know that you too will overcome. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace I offer is not like the peace the world offers. The world's peace is fleeting but my peace is lasting and deep. It is a peace that transcends circumstances, a peace that calms your soul even in the midst of chaos. Do not let your heart be troubled, for I am with you. I give you peace that the world cannot take away. Trust in me, and you will find peace that surpasses all understanding. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the only way to the Father. I am the truth that sets you free, and I am the life that gives you eternal hope. There is no other path to salvation but through me. Trust in me, and you will find your way to the Father. I am the source of all truth, and in me, you will discover the fullness of life. Follow me, and you will know the Father, for I and the Father are one. I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. I did not come to give you a life of empty rituals or mere survival. I came to give you a life of fullness, purpose, and joy. Life in me is abundant and overflowing, and it is found in relationship with the Father. Trust in me, and you will experience the fullness of life that I have for you. Let go of the empty pursuits of this world, and receive the life I offer. My life is the true life that will satisfy your soul. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Death is not the end, but a transition into eternal life with me. I am the resurrection and the life, 
and those who believe in me will never experience true death. Though your earthly body may pass away, your spirit will live forever with me in my Father's house. Let go of the fear of death, for it holds no power over you. Your life is secure in my hands, and in me, you have eternal hope. Trust in this promise, for I am the source of life that cannot be taken away. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. True richness comes not from earthly possessions but from humility and reliance on God. The poor in spirit are those who recognize their need for me and place their trust not in their own abilities, but in my grace. It is in your weakness that my strength is made perfect. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are humble, who acknowledge their dependence on me and seek my will above all else. Come with a heart that is open, humble, and ready to receive my grace. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In times of grief, loss, and sorrow, I am near to you. I understand your pain, and I promise to bring you comfort. Those who mourn will find solace in my arms, for I am the God of all comfort. In your brokenness, I will heal you, and I will replace your mourning with joy. Do not fear the sorrow, for it is through it that you will experience my deep and abiding love. I am with you in every tear, and I will bring you peace beyond understanding. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The meek are those who are gentle and humble, who do not seek power or dominance over others. Instead, they rely on my strength and trust in my timing. The meek shall inherit the earth, for I will exalt the humble and bring justice to the oppressed. Let go of the need for recognition or control, and trust in my perfect plan. The earth belongs to those who walk in humility, for I will make them stewards of all that is good and just. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. When your soul longs for righteousness, when you desire to live in a way that honors God, I promise to satisfy that hunger and thirst. The pursuit of righteousness is a longing for truth, justice, and love. Those who seek after it with all their hearts will be filled with my goodness and my spirit. I will satisfy your deepest desires and lead you into the fullness of life. Keep seeking righteousness, for you will find it in me. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. When you extend mercy to others, you reflect my heart of compassion. I have shown you great mercy, and I call you to do the same for others. In a world filled with judgment, let your mercy be a light that shines brightly. When you show kindness, forgiveness, and compassion, you open yourself to receiving my mercy. Mercy is a reflection of my love, and those who practice it will experience the boundless mercy of God in their own lives. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of heart comes from a deep desire to know and love me, free from the distractions and impurities of this world. When your heart is pure, you will see my presence in everything, both in the small and the great. Your heart becomes a reflection of my love, and in your purity, you will experience the fullness of my truth. Seek purity in your thoughts, actions, and desires, and you will experience my nearness. The pure in heart will be blessed with a deeper understanding of who I am. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Those who work to bring peace, who reconcile relationships and restore harmony, are the true children of God. My kingdom is a kingdom of peace, and those who reflect that peace are walking in my ways. Peacemakers bring light to a world that is often filled with conflict, and they carry my heart wherever they go. Blessed are those who work for peace, for they will be known as my own, sharing in the peace that passes all understanding. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Following me will sometimes bring persecution, as the world may not understand the truth of my kingdom. But do not be discouraged, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Your reward is great in heaven, 
and I am with you in every trial. Stand firm in your faith, for the suffering you endure for my name will be rewarded in my presence. I will strengthen you and uphold you as you walk the narrow path of righteousness. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? You are called to be a preserving force in the world, bringing flavor, truth, and goodness wherever you go. Salt preserves and enhances, and so must your life bring the flavor of my kingdom to the earth. Do not lose your saltiness by being conformed to the world, but let your life reflect my character and purposes. When you live according to my will, you bring light and hope to a dark world. Stay true to your calling, and you will be a powerful witness for me. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. You are meant to shine, to be a beacon of truth and love in the world. Just as a city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither should your light be hidden. Let your light shine through your actions, your words, and your love for others. When you live in a way that reflects my love, you draw others to me. Let your life be a testimony to the world of the hope and salvation that is found in me. Shine brightly, and others will see my glory through you. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. I came to fulfill the law, not to discard it. The law points to me, and in my life, death, and resurrection, I fulfilled all the promises made through the law and the prophets. I came to show you the heart of the law, which is love for God and love for others. Do not think that following the rules alone will save you, it is the heart of obedience and love that matters. I have come to make a way for you to live in perfect relationship with the Father through me. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. True righteousness is not just external obedience but a transformation of the heart. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law followed the letter of the law, but their hearts were far from God. I call you to a righteousness that comes from the inside out, a heart that is aligned with my will. It is not enough to appear righteous, you must live in a way that reflects true obedience and love for God and others. Let your righteousness exceed that of those who merely follow rules, and you will enter my kingdom. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye, and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. I call you to a higher way, a way of grace, mercy, and love. Instead of seeking vengeance, I ask you to forgive and show compassion, even to those who wrong you. When you respond with love rather than retaliation, you break the cycle of violence and hatred. This is the way of my kingdom, a kingdom of mercy, not retribution. Follow me, and you will be a reflection of the love that conquers all. In doing so, you will be a witness to the world of my heart. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Loving your enemies is the most powerful testimony of my love. It is easy to love those who love you, but when you love your enemies, you reveal the heart of the Father. Pray for those who hurt you, for in doing so, you reflect my mercy. This love is radical, it is transformational, and it is the love that changes the world. Love your enemies, and you will be known as my followers, children of the living God. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfection is not a matter of flawless behavior, but of complete surrender to the will of the Father. The call to perfection is a call to love as God loves, unconditionally, completely, and without reservation. You are called to reflect the nature of the Father, to live in harmony with His desires and purposes. Let your actions, thoughts, and desires align with His heart, and in doing so, you will find that you are being made perfect through His love and grace. Trust that through Him, you are being perfected, day by day, as you follow in His ways. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, 
or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Do not let the cares of the world consume you. Your Father knows your needs before you ask, and He is faithful to provide. Trust in His provision and seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. When you prioritize Him, everything else will fall into place. Worrying cannot add a single day to your life, but trusting in God can bring peace and assurance. Rest in the knowledge that your Father loves you and will supply all that you need. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The pursuit of my kingdom should be your highest priority. When you seek me with all your heart, I will provide for your needs and take care of the things that concern you. Let your life be marked by a desire to see my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Seek to live in alignment with my will, and trust that everything else will be given to you in my perfect timing. When your focus is on me, your worries will fade, and you will experience peace beyond understanding. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. I call you to a heart of humility and grace, not judgment. It is not your place to condemn others, for you too have been forgiven much. When you judge others, you place yourself above them, forgetting that you are in need of my mercy just as much as they are. Instead of judging, offer love, compassion, and understanding. Let your heart be full of grace, and trust that I alone am the righteous judge. When you show mercy, you reflect my heart and invite my mercy into your own life. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Before pointing out the flaws in others, take time to examine your own heart. It is easy to see the faults of others, but it is far more difficult to recognize your own. Humble yourself, and allow my spirit to reveal the areas in your life that need transformation. When you approach others with humility, rather than judgment, you will be a source of healing and encouragement. Take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to help your brother with the speck in theirs. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. I am a generous and loving father who delights in giving good gifts to my children. When you ask with a sincere heart, I will give you what is best for you. When you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me, for I am always near. Knock on the door of my kingdom, and I will open it wide for you. Do not grow weary in seeking, for your faith will be rewarded. Come to me with boldness, and I will answer your prayers according to my will. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the golden rule that guides all relationships, treat others with the same love, respect, and kindness that you desire for yourself. When you live this way, you reflect my heart of love and compassion. The world may tell you to seek your own interests, but I call you to selflessness and generosity. Love your neighbor as yourself, and in doing so, you fulfill the law and the prophets. When you treat others with dignity and grace, you reveal my kingdom on earth. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. The path to life is narrow, and few find it. The road of the world may seem wide and easy, but it leads to destruction. I call you to choose the narrow way, a way of obedience, faith, and sacrifice. The narrow path may be difficult, but it leads to life, peace, and eternal joy. Stay on the path I have set before you, and do not be swayed by the temptations of the world. Trust that I will guide you, and that the reward for following me is far greater than anything the world offers. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Not everyone who speaks in my name speaks truth. There are those who seek to deceive and lead you astray. Be vigilant and discerning, for false prophets can appear harmless, but their teachings can harm your soul. 
test everything against my word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If someone's message does not align with the truth of my kingdom, reject it, and hold fast to what is good. Do not be swayed by empty promises, but remain grounded in the truth that I have revealed to you. By their fruit you will recognize them. The true nature of a person is revealed in their actions, their character, and their fruit. If a tree is healthy, it will bear good fruit, and if it is unhealthy, it will bear bad fruit. In the same way, you can recognize those who follow me by their actions and their character. When you walk in my ways, you will bear good fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let your life bear witness to the truth of who I am, and through you, others will see my love and glory. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. True discipleship is not just about words, it is about obedience to the will of the Father. Many may claim to know me, but it is those who live according to my commands that will enter my kingdom. Do not be deceived by empty professions of faith, but let your life reflect the reality of your relationship with me. It is not enough to speak my name, you must live in a way that honors my Father and fulfills his purposes on earth. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The foundation of your life must be built on the solid rock of my truth. When you hear my words and put them into practice, you build your life on a firm foundation that will withstand the storms of life. The winds may blow, the rains may fall, but your house will stand strong because it is built on me. Do not be swayed by the shifting sands of worldly wisdom, but anchor your life in my word. In doing so, you will be able to endure every trial and remain steadfast in faith. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Without a solid foundation, your life will crumble when the storms come. If you hear my words but do not live according to them, your life will be like a house built on sand, unstable and easily destroyed. My words are not mere suggestions, they are the blueprint for building a life that is firm, secure, and eternal. Listen to my voice and obey, for in doing so, you will build a life that stands the test of time. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When life weighs heavy on your shoulders, come to me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You do not need to carry your burdens alone, I am here to help you. In me, you will find rest for your soul, peace for your troubled heart, and strength to continue your journey. Let go of your anxieties and find comfort in my loving embrace. I am with you always, and I will carry you through every trial, offering rest and peace beyond what the world can offer. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I know the troubles you face, the struggles and challenges that weigh on you. Life in this world can be difficult and full of trials, but I offer you my peace, a peace that transcends circumstances. When you feel overwhelmed, remember that I have already overcome the world. Do not let the troubles of this life steal your joy or your hope. Keep your eyes fixed on me, for in me, you are more than a conqueror. Take heart, for I am with you always, and in the end, victory belongs to those who remain faithful to me. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the only way to the Father, the truth that leads to eternal life. There are many paths that the world offers, but only in me will you find the way to true life. I am not just a guide or a teacher, I am the very source of life itself. If you seek the Father, you must come through me, for I am the bridge that connects you to Him. Trust in me, for I am the truth that reveals the Father's heart and the life that transforms your soul. 
Through me, you are reconciled to God, and you find eternal purpose and peace. If you love me, keep my commands. Love for me is demonstrated through obedience. It is not enough to say you love me with your words, your actions must reflect your love. When you keep my commands, you show the world that you are my disciple, and you honor the Father. My commands are not burdensome but are given to guide you into the fullness of life. They are not rules to restrict you, but a path to freedom and joy. When you obey, you walk in my love, and in that love, you find the true purpose and peace for which you were created. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the Shepherd who cares for you, watches over you, and protects you from harm. As a shepherd lays down his life to defend his sheep, so I have laid down my life for you. I know each of you by name, and I call you to follow me. You are precious to me, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Even in the darkest valley, I am with you, guiding you and providing for you. Trust in me, for I am your shepherd, and I will lead you to still waters and green pastures. The Spirit gives life the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are full of the Spirit and life. It is not by your own strength that you are saved or sustained, but by the life-giving Spirit of God. The flesh cannot produce what is eternal, but the Spirit brings life and transformation. My words are not just letters on a page, they are alive with the power of the Holy Spirit. When you receive my words, they bring life to your spirit and guide you in the way of righteousness. Do not rely on your own understanding, but let the Spirit lead you into all truth and life. Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. The kingdom of God is for the childlike, for those who come with humility, trust, and wonder. Do not dismiss the little ones or think that they are too young to understand my love. Children are open to the things of God, and their hearts are pure. In their simplicity, they demonstrate a faith that is unshaken and untainted by the complexities of the world. I welcome all who come to me with the faith of a child, for the kingdom belongs to those who trust in me with wholehearted devotion. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Discipleship is not about seeking comfort or ease, but about surrendering your own will for the sake of my kingdom. To follow me means to die to self, to put aside your own desires, and to embrace the path of sacrifice and service. It is a daily choice to take up your cross and follow me, to walk in my footsteps and live out my love. The path may be difficult, but it is also the path of greatest joy, for in losing your life for my sake, you will find true life. I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. My purpose is not just to offer you salvation, but to give you a life that is abundant, rich, and fulfilling. The world offers fleeting pleasures, but I offer life that is eternal, full of purpose, joy, and peace. When you follow me, you will experience the fullness of life that comes from being in relationship with the Father. I have come to restore all that was broken, to heal your wounds, and to offer you a life that is overflowing with my love. Come to me, and find the life you were created to live. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. As my followers, you are called to be the light of the world, to shine in the darkness and bring hope to those who are lost. Your life is a testimony to the truth of my love, and the way you live should reflect that light to others. Just as a city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither should your faith be concealed. Let your light shine brightly, that others may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Be a beacon of truth and love, and let your life point others to the light of the world. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. I am the living water, and anyone who comes to me will never thirst again. The world offers many things to quench your thirst, but only I can satisfy your soul.
Come to me with your deepest longings and your deepest needs, and I will give you water that will spring up to eternal life. When you drink from the well of my love, you will never be empty again. Let me fill you with my spirit, and you will find the peace, joy, and fulfillment that you have been searching for. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Humility is the key to entering the kingdom of heaven. Those who recognize their spiritual poverty and come to me in humility are the ones who inherit the kingdom. It is not the self-sufficient who are blessed, but those who depend on me for everything. Blessed are those who are aware of their need for my grace and who seek my forgiveness. When you come to me in humility, you will find that the kingdom of heaven is yours to experience, both now and forever. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In your sorrow and grief, know that I am near to you, offering comfort and peace. The pain you feel in this life is real, but it is not the end. I am the God who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. When you mourn, I mourn with you, and I will bring you comfort. Do not despair, for I will turn your mourning into joy. In the midst of your tears, know that I am working in you, bringing healing, restoration, and hope. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness is not weakness, but strength under control. It is the ability to submit to the will of the Father and to serve others with humility and gentleness. The meek do not seek power or position, but they trust in God's timing and purpose. It is the meek who will inherit the earth, for they are the ones who walk in the ways of the kingdom. In humility, they are exalted, and in servanthood, they are blessed. The world may honor the powerful, but it is the meek who are truly great in my eyes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Long for righteousness as you would long for food and drink, for when you seek me with all your heart, you will be satisfied. The world offers many distractions, but only I can truly satisfy your deepest longings. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, I will fill you with my spirit and make you whole. You will be satisfied in my presence, and your heart will be at peace. Seek me above all else, and you will find that I am all you need. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. When you show mercy to others, you reflect my heart. Mercy is the kindness extended to those who do not deserve it, the grace given to those who have wronged you. Just as I have shown you mercy by forgiving your sins, so you are called to show mercy to others. When you choose to forgive, to offer compassion, and to withhold judgment, you will find that mercy will be shown to you in your time of need. The mercy you give opens the door to more mercy in your own life. As you walk in mercy, you mirror my love and kindness to the world. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of heart is a reflection of your inner devotion to me. It is not just about outward actions, but the condition of your heart, free from deceit, malice, and selfish desires. When your heart is pure, you are able to see me more clearly and to experience my presence in deeper ways. It is through a pure heart that you find true peace, for it is undivided and wholly dedicated to me. Seek to cleanse your heart of all that hinders your relationship with me, and in doing so, you will come to see God more fully in your life. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The world is filled with conflict and division, but you are called to be a peacemaker. When you bring peace into situations of strife, you reflect the heart of the Father. Peacemakers do not just avoid conflict, they actively seek reconciliation and healing. By pursuing peace in your relationships, in your communities, and in your world, you are bringing the light of my kingdom into places of darkness. Blessed are those who seek peace, for they are the true children of God, carrying my love and peace into the world. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To follow me means to walk a path that may not always be accepted by the world. 
You may face ridicule, rejection, or even suffering because of your faith. But know that when you are persecuted for righteousness, you are in good company, for I too was persecuted for the sake of the kingdom. Do not be discouraged, for the reward is great in heaven. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who endure persecution for my name's sake, and their suffering will not be in vain. I am with you in your trials, strengthening you and holding you close. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled by men. As my followers, you are called to preserve and enhance the world around you. Just as salt adds flavor and prevents decay, you are called to bring life, truth, and purity to a world that is lost. Do not lose your distinctiveness or your passion for righteousness. If you lose your saltiness, you lose your purpose. Remain faithful to the call I have placed on your life, and you will be a positive influence, bringing healing and hope to those around you. Let your life reflect my love and truth, and you will be a light in the darkness. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. You are called to shine with my light, to stand out in a world that often walks in darkness. Your light is not meant to be hidden, but to be seen by all. Let your good deeds and your love for others be a testimony to the truth of my kingdom. Just as a city on a hill cannot be hidden, your light should be evident to all who are around you. Let your life speak of my goodness, and others will be drawn to the hope and love you carry. Shine brightly, for you are the light of the world. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. I have come to fulfill the law, not to discard it. The law was given to guide you, to reveal your need for a savior. But through me, the law finds its true meaning and fulfillment. I did not come to set aside the word of God, but to fulfill every promise and to bring its ultimate purpose to fruition. In me, you find the full expression of God's will, a will that is rooted in love, grace, and truth. Trust in my word, for it is life and will lead you into all righteousness. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. True righteousness is not about outward appearances or legalistic observance of rules, it is about the condition of your heart. The Pharisees and teachers of the law focused on the external, but I call you to a deeper righteousness that comes from within. It is a righteousness that flows from love, humility, and a sincere desire to follow God's will. It is not enough to appear righteous, you must be transformed from the inside out. Strive for this righteousness, for it is through a pure heart that you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Anger and bitterness poison your soul and hinder your relationship with me. It is not just the outward actions that matter, but the attitudes of the heart. If you harbor anger toward others, you are allowing division and sin to take root in your life. I call you to reconcile with your brothers and sisters, to forgive and seek peace. When you forgive, you free yourself from the burden of anger, and you reflect my love and grace. Let go of bitterness, and make peace with one another, for this is the way of my kingdom. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Reconciliation is more important than ritual. Before you bring your offerings to God, make sure that your relationships with others are in order. If there is division, seek to mend it. Go to your brother or sister and make things right, for your love for others is a reflection of your love for me. Do not let unresolved conflict hinder your worship. Make peace, and then come before me with a pure heart, ready to offer your gifts in sincerity and love. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. 
But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Sin begins in the heart and mind. It is not enough to avoid outward acts of wrongdoing, you must also guard your thoughts and desires. Lust is a sin of the heart, and it leads to destruction. I call you to purity in your thoughts, words, and actions. Do not let your mind dwell on things that lead you astray. Instead, fill your heart with love, integrity, and holiness, and seek to honor me with every part of your being. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Sin is a serious matter, and it must be dealt with decisively. If there is something in your life that leads you into sin, you must take drastic measures to remove it. This does not mean literal harm to yourself, but it is a call to eliminate the things in your life that cause you to stumble. Be ruthless in dealing with sin, for it has eternal consequences. Seek purity and holiness, and protect your heart from the temptations that seek to draw you away from me. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Marriage is a sacred covenant, and I call you to honor it. Divorce is not part of God's plan, but I understand that there are situations where it may be necessary due to the hardness of hearts. I call you to protect the sanctity of marriage and to approach relationships with commitment, love, and faithfulness. Remember that marriage is a reflection of the relationship between Christ and His Church, and it should be treated with the utmost respect and reverence. Again, you have heard that it was said, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all. Either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Let your word be your bond. Do not make oaths or promises that you cannot keep. Your integrity should be evident in the way you live, and your words should always reflect the truth. When you speak, let your yes be yes and your no be no. There is no need to invoke oaths or swearing, for your word should be trustworthy in itself. Live with integrity, and you will be a witness of my truth in a world full of deceit. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye, and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. The world teaches revenge, but I call you to a higher way, the way of love and forgiveness. When someone wrongs you, do not seek to retaliate or to get even. Instead, show them grace and mercy, for in doing so, you reflect my love. By turning the other cheek, you break the cycle of hatred and violence, showing the world a better way. Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, and leave judgment in my hands. This is the way of the kingdom, where love triumphs over all. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. When you are wronged, do not focus on protecting your rights or possessions. Instead, seek to bless and serve others, even when they do not deserve it. This act of surrender demonstrates the generosity and selflessness that characterize my kingdom. When you freely give, even when it is difficult, you mirror the heart of God, who gave everything for you. Do not be afraid to lose something for the sake of peace and love, for in doing so, you will gain much more than you can imagine. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Go beyond what is expected of you. When someone demands your time or service, give even more than they ask. This is not about compliance or obligation, but about going the extra mile to show love and generosity. By giving more than is required, you demonstrate the abundance of my grace and the heart of a servant. 
It is in these acts of kindness that you reflect the character of my kingdom, a kingdom where selflessness and humility reign. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Generosity should not be limited by the worthiness of the recipient. When someone is in need, offer them what you have, whether it is your time, your resources, or your love. Do not judge or hesitate to give, but give freely and without expectation of anything in return. When you give, you become a conduit of my love and provision, showing the world that I am a God who meets the needs of his people through the kindness of others. Let your generosity reflect my character and bring glory to my name. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It is easy to love those who love you, but I call you to a higher standard. Love your enemies, those who hurt and reject you. Pray for those who persecute you, for in doing so, you break the power of hatred and invite healing into the situation. This is the radical love that I demonstrate through the cross, love that forgives, love that sacrifices, love that brings reconciliation. When you love your enemies, you become a witness of my grace and show the world the power of love to transform hearts. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfection is not about being flawless or without fault, it is about being fully devoted to God and His will. I call you to live a life that reflects the character of your Heavenly Father. This means loving others unconditionally, walking in humility, seeking justice, and showing mercy. It is about striving for holiness in your thoughts, words, and actions, not through your own strength, but through my power at work within you. Though you may not achieve perfection in this life, seek to reflect the perfect love and grace of God in all that you do. When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Your acts of kindness and generosity should be done in secret, not for the praise of others, but for the glory of God. When you give, give with a humble heart, seeking only to bless others and to reflect the love of Christ. Your reward is not found in human recognition, but in the knowledge that your actions please the Father. Let your generosity be an expression of your love for God and His people, and trust that He sees and rewards every act of kindness, even when no one else does. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have their reward. Prayer is not about public display or seeking the admiration of others, it is a personal conversation with your Heavenly Father. When you pray, do so in private, in the quiet of your heart, where you can pour out your thoughts, needs, and gratitude before God. He knows your heart and hears your prayers, whether or not anyone else is watching. Your reward comes from the Father, not from the approval of people. Seek to connect with God in sincerity and humility, and you will experience the peace and joy that comes from His presence. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. True prayer is not about the words you speak or the position you hold, but about the relationship you cultivate with God. Find a quiet place where you can focus on Him, where distractions fade, and you can speak to Him from the depths of your heart. God sees and knows your every prayer, even before you speak it. Trust that He will answer in His perfect timing and way. Let your prayer life be a reflection of your intimate connection with your Creator, knowing that He rewards those who seek Him in sincerity. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. The things of this world are temporary and fleeting, but the treasures of heaven are eternal. Do not focus on accumulating wealth, possessions, or status, for these things will not last. Instead, invest in the things that matter in eternity, loving others, serving with humility, and building my kingdom. 
When you store up treasures in heaven, you are laying a foundation for eternal reward. The wealth of this world will fade, but the treasures of heaven will never be lost. Seek the things that are above, where your heart will find true fulfillment. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your heart follows where you place your focus. If your treasure is in worldly things, money, success, power, your heart will be consumed by these pursuits. But if your treasure is in God's kingdom, your heart will be aligned with His purposes. You will find joy in serving others, in seeking justice, in loving selflessly. Let your treasure be found in the things that reflect my heart, and your life will be filled with purpose and peace. The true treasure is found in the love, grace, and presence of God, and this is where your heart should rest. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. What you focus on determines the state of your soul. If your eyes are fixed on the things of this world, materialism, pride, selfish desires, your heart will be darkened. But if your eyes are fixed on me, on truth, love, and righteousness, your soul will be filled with light. Let your focus be on the things that are pure, holy, and good, and your life will reflect my light. Protect your heart and mind from the distractions of the world, and keep your eyes on the path of righteousness. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot divide your allegiance between God and the world. Your heart and loyalty must be given fully to one or the other. If you try to serve both, you will find yourself torn, conflicted, and unfulfilled. Choose to serve me above all else, and you will find peace and purpose. The things of this world are temporary, but my kingdom is eternal. Give your heart fully to me, and I will provide for your every need and guide you into the abundant life I have prepared for you. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Do not let anxiety consume you. The concerns of this world, your provision, your needs, are not to be the focus of your life. Your Heavenly Father knows what you need, and He cares for you far more than you can imagine. Just as He provides for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, He will provide for you. Trust in His love and provision, and do not allow worry to rob you of the peace He offers. Life is about more than your physical needs, it is about your relationship with God, the growth of your soul, and the fulfillment of His purpose for you. Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? If God provides for the birds, surely He will provide for you. You are of immeasurable value to Him, and He will take care of you in every season of life. Do not let fear overtake you, for His provision is certain. Trust in His timing and His wisdom. Just as He faithfully cares for the birds, He will take care of you, providing for your needs and guiding you on the path He has set before you. You are His beloved child, and He will never leave you nor forsake you. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Worry is a thief of time and peace. It accomplishes nothing but steals the present moment from you. Trusting in God allows you to rest in the knowledge that He is in control. Instead of worrying, focus on what is before you today, living in the moment, walking in faith, and trusting God for tomorrow. Your life is in His hands, and He is faithful to provide for you, guide you, and protect you. Let go of anxiety, for it cannot change your circumstances, only faith in God can transform your heart and mind. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When you prioritize God's kingdom above all else, everything else falls into place.
Your needs will be met, your path will be clear, and your life will be filled with purpose. Seek first his kingdom, his rule, his will, and his glory, and all the things you need will follow. Trust that when you place God at the center of your life, he will take care of the rest. Your focus should not be on the worries of tomorrow, but on living for him today, walking in his will, and spreading his love. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not borrow trouble from the future. Live in the present, trusting that God will take care of each day as it comes. Worrying about what may or may not happen tomorrow only robs you of the peace and joy God desires for you today. Each day brings its own challenges, but it also brings new mercies and grace. Trust God for today, and let Him carry the burdens of tomorrow. He is already there, preparing the way and making provision for all that you will face. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Judgment belongs to God alone. You are not called to condemn others, but to love them. When you judge, you set yourself up for judgment, and your own shortcomings are laid bare. Instead, approach others with compassion, grace, and humility, remembering that you, too, are in need of God's mercy. Let go of the desire to criticize or condemn, and instead, offer forgiveness and understanding. When you withhold judgment, you reflect the heart of God, who is slow to anger and abounding in love. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Before pointing out the flaws in others, examine your own heart. We are all in need of God's grace, and it is easy to overlook our own faults while focusing on the mistakes of others. I call you to humility and self-reflection. When you recognize your own imperfections, you are less likely to judge others harshly. Instead, extend grace to those around you, just as God extends grace to you. Let your life be marked by mercy, understanding, and love. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. I invite you to come boldly to me with your requests, your questions, and your desires. Your Heavenly Father delights in giving good gifts to His children. When you ask, seek, and knock with a sincere heart, you will find that I am faithful to answer. Do not hesitate to seek my will, for I am eager to guide you, to provide for you, and to reveal my plans for your life. Keep asking, seeking, and knocking, knowing that I am with you and that I hear your prayers. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. My heart is open to you. When you ask, you receive. When you seek, you find. When you knock, I open the door. Your prayers are never unheard, and your desire for closeness with me is always met. I am a God who gives generously to those who seek me with all their hearts. Trust that when you come to me in faith, I will provide what you need and open the doors that lead to the life I have prepared for you. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? You are precious to me, and I will never give you something harmful when you ask for what you need. Just as an earthly father gives good gifts to his children, so I, your heavenly father, will provide for you. Trust in my goodness and my love, for I desire to bless you. When you come to me with your needs, know that I will always respond with wisdom and love, giving you what is best for you. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. The golden rule is simple, treat others the way you want to be treated. In all your interactions, choose kindness, empathy, and respect. When you live this way, you reflect the love of God to those around you. Your actions become a testimony of my grace, and through your kindness, others will see the heart of God. Let your life be a reflection of the love you have received, and extend that same love to others. Enter through the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. The path to eternal life is narrow and requires intentionality. The world offers many paths that lead to destruction, but the way of life is found in following me. Choose the narrow gate, the road less traveled, and walk in the truth of my word. Though the journey may be difficult, it leads to life, peace, and joy. Trust in me as your guide, and I will lead you on the path that leads to everlasting life. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The road to eternal life is not easy to find, but it is worth the search. Few are willing to walk the narrow path, but those who do will find the reward of life with me forever. Stay on this path, even when it is hard, for I am with you every step of the way. The journey may be challenging, but the destination is worth it, an eternity in my presence, where there is no pain, no sorrow, only peace and joy. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It is not enough to simply speak words of faith, your actions must reflect your devotion to God. True faith is demonstrated in obedience to His will. When you align your life with the will of the Father, you show the world that you are truly my disciple. Let your faith be alive, not just in words, but in deeds. The kingdom of heaven is open to those who live out their faith with sincerity and commitment, walking in the will of God. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Your foundation must be built on my word. When you hear my teachings and put them into practice, you build your life on a firm and unshakable foundation. Storms will come, but you will stand strong, for your life is anchored in the truth. Live out the principles of my kingdom, and you will weather every storm. Let my word be the rock upon which you build your life, and you will find strength and stability in all circumstances. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. A life built on anything other than my word is unstable. When you hear my teachings and ignore them, you are building on a foundation that will not hold when trials come. Without a firm foundation in my truth, your life will be shaken by the storms of life. Let your life be built on the rock of my word, and you will stand firm. When you obey my teachings, you build your life on what is lasting and eternal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What you value most reveals the condition of your heart. If your treasure is in the things of this world, wealth, success, or temporary pleasures, your heart will be drawn to those fleeting things. But if your treasure is in the kingdom of God, your heart will be anchored in eternal truths. Seek first the things that have lasting value, love, righteousness, justice, and mercy. Invest in the kingdom, and your heart will reflect the values of heaven. Where you place your treasure is where your heart will dwell, so let it be with me. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. The material wealth of this world is fleeting. It is subject to decay, loss, and theft. Instead of hoarding earthly treasures, invest in what is eternal, acts of kindness, love, and service that reflect my heart. Your true treasure lies in the things that cannot be taken from you, faith, hope, love, and the relationships you build with others. Store up treasures in heaven, where nothing can destroy them, and your heart will be secure in what truly matters. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. The things that truly matter are those that will never fade or be lost. When you invest in the kingdom of God, by loving others, sharing the gospel, living out my teachings, you are building treasure that will last for eternity. These treasures are not of this world, but of heaven, where they are secure. Live with eternity in mind, 
knowing that the choices you make today echo into the future. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, and your heart will be filled with the joy of knowing that your life is aligned with God's eternal purposes. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. What you focus on shapes your life. If your eyes are fixed on what is good, pure, and true, your heart and mind will be filled with light. But if your eyes are focused on the darkness of sin, selfishness, or worldly desires, your life will be full of darkness. Guard what you allow to enter your heart through your eyes, for it has the power to shape your actions and your character. Keep your eyes fixed on me, the light of the world, and your whole being will be filled with my light, bringing clarity, peace, and purpose to your life. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? If you allow darkness to cloud your vision, if you fix your eyes on the things that lead you away from me, your whole life will be filled with confusion and emptiness. Your heart and mind will become clouded, and the light of truth will be dimmed. Be careful what you allow into your heart, for it shapes your character and your choices. Choose to focus on what is pure, good, and holy, and let the light of my truth fill you. Without this light, you will walk in darkness, but with it, you will find the path of life. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot divide your allegiance between me and the things of this world. Your heart can only be fully devoted to one master. Choose whom you will serve, will it be the temporary pleasures and pursuits of this world, or will you serve the eternal purposes of my kingdom? I call you to love me with your whole heart, soul, and mind, and to make me your one true master. In doing so, you will find peace, fulfillment, and purpose that nothing else in this world can offer. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot divide your allegiance between me and the things of this world. Your heart can only be fully devoted to one master. Choose whom you will serve, will it be the temporary pleasures and pursuits of this world, or will you serve the eternal purposes of my kingdom? I call you to love me with your whole heart, soul, and mind, and to make me your one true master. In doing so, you will find peace, fulfillment, and purpose that nothing else in this world can offer. You cannot serve both God and money. The pursuit of wealth can easily become an idol, drawing your focus away from me. It is not wrong to have money or possessions, but when they become your master, they steal your heart away from God. Trust in my provision, and seek first the kingdom of God. When you do, all that you need will be provided. Do not allow the love of money to control your life, but instead, live generously and use your resources to further my kingdom. In doing so, you will find true fulfillment and treasure that lasts forever. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? I know your needs, and I am faithful to provide for you. Do not let worry consume you, for it does not add a single moment to your life. Trust in my provision and my care, for I love you deeply. The concerns of this world are temporary, but your life and your relationship with me are eternal. Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and everything else will fall into place. I will take care of you, for you are more valuable to me than the birds of the air or the flowers of the field. Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? If I provide for the birds of the air, how much more will I provide for you? You are my beloved child, and I know every need you have. Trust in my goodness and faithfulness, knowing that I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
I care for you more deeply than you can comprehend, and I will provide for you in every season of life.